welcome to my kitchen. Today we're doing a big batch cooking day. We are gonna make a bunch of lasagna, stuffed shells, um, sausage pasta, I'll show that. It's like a creamy sausage pasta. We are also doing enchiladas, and if I still have energy by the end of all that, we are going to do chicken pot pie. The only reason I say if I still have energy is because I need to make all of the pie crust, and I would need to make a lot of pie crust in order to make enough for as many chicken pot pies as I wanna make. So we shall see if I get to that part. We have all of our ingredients out. Grace is already working on shredding chicken for me. I'm about to fill pots with water to boil the pasta and go ahead and getting that. <laughs> you okay? Though, we will not be cooking the lasagna noodles. We're gonna do dry lasagna noodles and freeze it uncooked, and so we'll show you how to do that. Grace is actually the queen of lasagna in this house, so she will be helping with that. But I do need to boil my penne pasta for my sausage pasta, and then I need to boil my shells. So we're gonna get that started. The reason we're gonna go ahead and get the pasta cooked before we cook the ground beef and the sausage is because I want that pasta draining and nice and dry before I make my dishes. Now, when I'm doing big batch cooking, I do like to multitask, but my brain needs to basically work on the same things. So I'm not gonna work on the enchiladas while I'm working on the pastas. All the pastas have very similar ingredients as far as sauce and cheese and noodles. So I'm gonna go ahead and make all of those, and then I'll come back around to the enchiladas and the chicken pot pies. That's just what works best for me. Maybe you can be doing enchilada sauce while you're doing spaghetti sauce, but I can't. Of course, I'm not making the spaghetti sauce today. We are using store-bought. Somebody made it somewhere. <laughs> when I get these pots filled up and get them boiling on the stove, I'm gonna go ahead and make my filling for my stuffed shells and then start working on the next thing as well. I hope you guys are laughing at me while I carry my extremely heavy pot over to my stove. You know why? Oh yeah. Grace, why do I think everyone should be laughing at me? Because you have a pot filler. <laughs> you guys. Here. Here. Because I have a pot filler. What am I doing? <laughs> Put right into the perfect kitchen for batch cooking. I know. Well, at least I have a whole other pot to fill. Look at these babies. Is it loud? <laughs> Truly, your favorite place pot is back. Grace is working on chopping up this chicken for the enchiladas. I'm gonna fill this with water and start turning it into broth. And like I said, this is my first time using one of those roasters. So I'm not sure how long it takes to make broth in one, but I'll just Google it real quick and see if I can find the answers. What do you think about that, Wilder? We gotta so, it. I'm gonna make a whole bunch of broth. We have our roaster filled with water. And now I'm gonna add a couple of tablespoons of vinegar to make bone broth. That's probably plenty. It's quite a bit of water in there, but that should be enough. And then I'll add some salt here in just a second when I have two hands free. I was reading to cook it at 250 for 48 hours. So my question is, is can you leave a roaster on like you can a crock pot? I'm gonna have to look that up too. <laughs> I'm sure you guys know. A lot of you guys have been using roasters for a long time, but this is my first adventure in an electric roaster. And it's fun, I like using it. Turn it around, remember to keep it safe. Always turn your chairs this way, it just makes them a lot safer for kids using them. We are gonna put a bunch of chopped spinach in our stuffed shells, and so Brighton is going to open these packages for me and squeeze all the water out and get that going. You ready? Yeah. Grace still diligently working on the chicken over there. I'm gonna hopefully get this pasta thrown in here now. Now one thing I'm gonna do differently, I am not going to make these all the way. All I'm gonna do is stuff them, flash freeze them on just like a flat pan, and then we'll throw them in freezer bags. That way I don't have to use as many um, nine by 13 casserole dishes. Taking up space in my freezer, this will take up a lot less space, and it's still very easy to throw it together for a dinner or for a lunch. So say like Grace loves pasta, and say like, 
I'm not around or she we're busy and she wants to grab some lunch and we're doing something else, whatever. There's a million reasons why someone would just grab a few out and heat some up for themselves with some pasta sauce and cheese on top. So keeping these very basic saves space, but it also makes them more flexible about how you use them. Grace just asked me a great question and I realize y'all may not know. I just said I'm going to flash freeze them, but basically it just means you're not gonna freeze them all the way through. You're just gonna freeze them till they're hard enough to like put up to where they won't fall apart or stick together. Kind of like you would do fruit. Whenever you freeze fruit, you do the same thing. You lay them out, not touching on a flat baking sheet and then you freeze them just for a little while to get them nice and hard and solid enough to not stick together. That way they're easier to get out of the bag. Same with these shells. Okay, pot number one is ready. What I like to do whenever I'm cooking a lot of pasta is I go ahead and open everything up. That way it's all going in at the same time. When you have this many boxes, it um, can take you a minute to get them all open and pour it in. And this way everything's getting cooked at the same time. Okay, that was six pounds of penne pasta for the creamy sausage pasta that I'm gonna make. Um, one thing is, is that if you were going to bake a pasta, whether you bake it now or you bake it later, um, after you've frozen it, you want to make the pasta al dente, so you wanna undercook it just a little, cause it's gonna continue cooking once you put it in the oven to bake, now or later, either way. And I'm sure many of you are wondering why I'm putting the lid on. I just do that to bring it quickly back to a boil. I'll take it off as soon as I see it start to boil again. So I'm sure I'll also forget and it will boil over. Right, and it's finishing up on that spinach for me. And then Grace finished up the chicken, so we're gonna get this covered and thrown in the refrigerator. So it's gonna be a little while before I get to the chicken. Just a second, please. Okay. I'm actually really glad that this pot took longer to boil than this pot because I couldn't handle that much pasta straining at one time. I don't have enough colanders or sink space. So I'm grateful. This will go, for the, we'll do the penne first and then we'll get the shells going. Okay, while we're waiting for that to finish up, I lay out a spot for my pasta to be drying once I strain it. You about done? I'm about to need to strain it. Yeah, just got one more. I always like to test it so it said to cook it for 10 minutes on the box. I put it on eight. I feel like the pasta is perfect for what we're using it for because like I said, it's going to continue to cook whenever whenever we bake it. I just want you to scoot over because I don't want to spill hot water on you. Okay. We're gonna have to do it in little shifts because we have way too small of a colander to be doing this. Little shakes. Put that over here. So we can get things going. Oh, I should have used big towels for this. Good job. Okay, we've got our pasta drying over here, our shells in. Now I'm gonna make a spot to lay out our shells to dry whenever they are done. While we're waiting for the shells to cook, oh, see, I told you that would happen. I can never remember. I remembered last time. Okay, crisis averted. Um, while that's cooking, I'm gonna throw the sausage in here for the creamy sausage pasta. And I was actually out of loose sausage. I only had two packs of loose, so um, I'm making four packs of sausage. It's about four pounds. Because I'm, <coughs> excuse me, because I'm hoping to do four nine by 13s of this dish. So it's one pound of sausage per, it's one pound of sausage per nine by 13. Once these are cooked, I can just break these up. I can just mash these up into little pieces while the loose sausage is cooking and it'll be fine. What's really great is that all of the ingredients that I need to make this creamy sausage pasta, Brighton got commandeered to help with babies. <clears throat> they are totally only wanting mommy, which has been the case lately, which is fine. But we gave them popsicles and took them outside to play in buckets of water. Obviously supervised. So I gotta do this by myself. Joy, do you have, can you come help me in a minute? Yeah, I'm gonna 
It's especially important not to overcook the shells because they need to be firm enough to hold the filling and without breaking. Um, also, as soon as you can handle them, I'll show you. As soon as you can handle touching them, which these are so pretty hot, you kind of want to pull them apart so that they don't get stuck together. I'd love to be outside, but I really need some quick easy meals for the kids right now. This month, the month of April, is a really big month for school stuff. I know we homeschool, but we do a lot of outside activities. Most of those things are finishing up this month, so they all have like their end of year this and their end of year that and last field trip and this and that, so there's a lot going on. Hey, oh no, hey, hey, baby alert! With a purple, whew, you got a purple popsicle, girl. Let's get you back outside. Oh yeah, it's everywhere. <laughs> Come on, baby girl. I did actually overcook these a little bit just because I had to go help with the babies earlier. I think they're settled now. Other than them coming inside, walking around everywhere with purple popsicles. I may just have to make these into a casserole. So many of them are broken. It's so funny to me whenever I'm filming something like this and I'm like, it's really important not to do this. And then I do that thing. And then you guys get to see firsthand why it's important not to do that. I'm trying to think of how I can creatively fix this. I think what I'm gonna do is pick up the ones that are shells because I would really like to have some frozen frozen shells in the freezer. I messed really up. Really helpful. Everybody yeah, agrees. but here's what I want you to do. I want you to yeah. sort these very gently. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and get the filling made and we can get to work on this. So any nice whole ones put up here and broken ones that can't be redeemed, like that yeah. one's probably is too floppy. Yeah. No, that one was perfect. And we'll just go ahead and make, what we'll do is we'll make, we'll stuff those and freeze them. And then we'll make like a little lasagna kind of thing with the rest yeah. of them. Okay, but it's still a little bit inside. Oh, how did, where did all this come from? Well, I've been here cooking up a storm. Where have you been at? In the playroom. In the playroom? Oh. Okay, so can you please not eat the whole ones? Oh. Just eat the broken ones. Can you do that for me? Mm. Thanks. So my hope was to make four servings of this. So I'm still gonna go with that. I'm gonna use, I don't know if the amounts will be right at this point since we're pivoting, but um, I'm gonna do four quarts of ricotta. I did four 10 ounce containers of spinach. We're gonna but use four I eggs. I love shells. Let's do the recipe for I just made it up. Um, Grandma always made them for you. I've made these my whole life. Okay. Oh my goodness, I can't wait. Two, oh. four teaspoons of salt. You just kind of guess. <laughs> well, I kind of know. I've done this so many times. Yeah, yeah. A couple of tablespoons of Italian herbs. This Italian herb mixture has oregano, marjoram, thyme, basil, rosemary, and sage. We're gonna throw in some Parmesan potatoes. Delicioso. Okay, this is seven ounces of Parmesan. And we're just gonna start mashing this together. I would usually just use my hands. Maybe I'll continue to do that. Can I use my hands? Do you really want to? Yes. Well, are they clean? Yes, I just took a bath. Okay. How, how good is They do look very clean. Oh, that feels so good. It's cold, isn't it? Oh, thank goodness. Except <laughs> <laughs> it's not with cream. cheese. Cheese. I love cheese Why is it from my head it? down to my knees. I love cheese. Why is it not a cottage cheese? That is a very good question that I don't know the answer to. You can probably look it out. Right, Lather, I just got to mix this with my hands. With our bare hands. All right, see our pan? It's a little hard to see. We're trying to get everyone in the shot here. It's kind of hard. So I've always hated parchment. I mean, I love it, but it's hard to use because it doesn't stay in place. So you guys taught me to wrinkle it up. I would use water in the bottom of the pan. That's a good idea, too. But then look, it just goes right where you want it. You know how to fill these. And then just place it right here. And then you're gonna cover it with sauce. No, I'm not. Oh, you're not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna freeze them freeze individually, and then, and then we can just make them as we want to. You know what? It's almost dinner time. That's why you're hungry. What's the supper? Lasagna. Mm. Again. 
Yep. Okay. I'm original. I need to get to a stopping point. So what I'm going to do is get this meat browned for the spaghetti sauce for the lasagna. And then we are going to finish up on these stuffed shells. And then we're going to have dinner, bedtime. Probably need to go out in the garden and work a little bit. And then I will come back in this evening and keep working. That's going to help. You need to wash your hands really good for you to sign up. Even though I'm using a pre-made pasta sauce, I am gonna add herbs and salt to my meat just because it'll bring more flavor to my pasta sauce. We're gonna add in some more Italian seasoning as well as some salt. Now the pasta sauce is gonna have quite a bit of salt in it since it's store-bought, so we won't over salt the meat. Uh, I would say about a half a teaspoon per chunk. They're all a little bit more than a pound. Also, the mozzarella and the parmesan that we will be putting, and the ricotta that we will be putting into the um, lasagna will also have salt in it. So we just don't want to over-salt our food, you know? However, if you like over-salting your food, go for it. Getting a good look at our sausage. It's getting close to being done. Ground, ground beef just starting. I'm going to go ahead and put together this pivoting pasta casserole. I don't know what to call it. The way I like to get jars open that are difficult to open is I just bang them on the side. Oh, it already popped. It'll pop them and it just opens right up. No big deal. So I'm gonna do a layer of sauce just like I usually would. Okay, I'm gonna layer these. I'm not really sure how well this is all gonna go down. But if we have plenty of toppings, it should be okay. This will be interesting. Like how close together should I put it? Should I stuff them close together or give some space? I'm using these broken. Okay, so I did one layer, kind of pretty much smushed together. It's like you're not really gonna be able to spread it out like you would lasagna. Mom, today we're gonna eat a whole bunch of stuff. You think we're gonna eat all this? Yeah. We're not gonna eat all this today. These are mommy's, we're gonna have these frozen meals this month. Mommy's got a bunch of potlucks she has to bring food to. Um, we've got a lot of busy evenings coming up, so I just want to be prepared and not be stressed about food. Okay. These are nice and filled. I have to say, she did a wonderful job. Go ahead and flash freeze those. That's really pretty. Good job. So this is coming along very well. I think I have a name for it. <clears throat> Not pivot pasta, but that would be fun. But we could call it deconstructed stuffed shells. <laughs> Babies are relentless in their chaos making. I have these two ready. I'm not gonna cook them. I mean, it's basically already cooked. What I'm gonna do is put parchment down on top. I'm gonna wrap these a couple of times with aluminum foil all the way around. <laughs> that will prevent freezer burn. These should last up to three months in the freezer that way. And then whenever I cook them, I'll just take them out. There's two ways you can do it. You can thaw them and then cook them, or you can just throw them in the oven. It, the only thing that'll be different is the cooking time. So I would say an hour and 10 minutes if you're gonna cook them frozen, maybe 30 to 45 minutes if you're gonna keep cook them thawed. Now one thing I will make sure and do is whenever I cook them, I will take the aluminum foil off and take the parchment off and then tent the aluminum foil so that it doesn't stick to my cheese. We have the pasta covered so it's not drying out. We have the sausage done. The fat is cooling so that I can strain it into a cup to save it to use to cook with. Sausage fat is one of the best things to make biscuits and gravy with. We have the ground beef browning. And I'm gonna hopefully take, can I take five minutes and do the dishes? Can I? It will make it a lot easier for me when I come back later. Okay, this may or may not be happening. I 
like to clean as I go so that when I get to the end, I'm not overwhelmed with the mess. Here we go. Sit down. Dinner time. Dinner time. See you guys in just a minute. Now we're gonna work on the lasagnas. The babies need to go to bed, so mom's putting them to bed. We're gonna use a method so you don't boil the noodles before you cook it. We're gonna make two lasagnas, and first we're gonna make the filling, which is the ricotta cheese and the eggs. We're gonna add one 32 ounce thing of ricotta cheese for the two lasagnas. One egg. And then we also need some salt, which I don't have over here. So I just put a little bit in, because you don't need that much salt for this. Just like a pinch or two. Okay, a teaspoon, mother. <laughs> just mix it all up, and it sounds really weird. So, with the no boiling the noodles method, we're using store-bought sauce, but if we were using homemade sauce, we would, add, we would have to add water instead of just adding extra sauce. Because store-bought sauce is a lot waterier than if you were to make your own sauce. So we're gonna be using two of these per lasagna. Well, to make two, we only need one box of noodles. That is a one pound box of noodles. And we are using a nine by 13 pan. Okay, for the first layer, you're gonna put about one third of the sauce into each pan. One third of the sauce out of one jar into each pan. And then you're gonna put a layer of hard, dry, on top. <laughs> For your next layer, you're gonna get your ricotta cheese filling and put about a fourth of it on top of the noodles. Take this rest of this tomato sauce in this jar and put it on this one. On this layer, we're also going to put some mozzarella cheese. Just a big handful of it. Just put it all over it. Alright, for the last layer, we're going to get more pasta sauce. We just pour all our edges so it like goes down the sides just to make sure that it will cook well. Put something on the I want this all of it. About two big handfuls. Grace kindly made the lasagna for me, but I was sitting right here and I still didn't even realize that she had not put the spaghetti sauce in with the meat, but we'll beef these up a bit. Ooh, that's what we could do. I'll just go ahead and add beef right here on this layer, then we'll do noodles, sauce, cheese, problem solved. Since we left out all the meat, I'm gonna go ahead and make two more lasagnas because we have the ingredients. Might as well make it. I like to finish it off with some Parmesan. Believe it or not, we actually made six of these today. Earlier, Grace made two of them, not realizing that I was planning to make them today. So we've actually made six lasagnas today. I wanna talk for a minute about something too. And I'm not saying that I've like always made lasagna from absolute scratch, but I know how to make ricotta cheese. I know how to can tomato sauce. I know how to grow the tomatoes. I know how to keep a cow. I know how to keep chickens so that I could literally make this whole thing. I know how to make pasta. I could literally make this from scratch besides uh, growing the wheat, but I did not. <laughs> I bought every single thing in these casserole dishes and I could let that still my joy over having meals to prepare ahead and to share with others, but I'm not gonna. Because the truth is, 
I don't have a cow. I don't have chickens. I don't have tomatoes I put up from last year. And honestly, I'm probably not going to have them this year. I don't have a big enough garden to put up a year's worth of tomatoes. However, what I do have is the ability to make lasagna in this big, beautiful kitchen and the money to buy the ingredients. And so I'm not going to let this ideal of perfect and from scratch stop me from doing what I can do. And I just have a feeling that if you watch my channel, you probably watch a lot of other channels and you're going to see people making the pasta, making their own ricotta. They have their own chickens. They have all the things and they're literally growing this food and then putting it together from absolute scratch, not from store-bought scratch. Well, we shouldn't rename my channel store-bought scratch. Brie from store-bought scratch. <laughs> Though honestly, the, the from scratch isn't necessarily about cooking. All I have to say is if you're, if you're on a farm and you are doing that, good. I'm happy for you. I'm not saying anything against you. I know the joy of the feeling of providing for your family in that way. But if you are not on a farm and you are buying it all and making it from scratch that way, then I say you're doing great. And I just want you to feel that. I want you to feel like you're doing great and not feel like you're not living up to some ideal that isn't possible for you. I just really want to encourage people to be okay with where they're at. Not that we don't try to do more or try to get better at things, but sometimes it's really okay just to be where you're at. You don't have to get any better at it. You can just be and be glad in it and rest in it and not always strive. <laughs> so girl, you go out there, you buy all the ingredients to make this very easy lasagna. There's practically no ingredients in it, if you notice. I keep my lasagna very simple. I'll add a side salad, some homemade bread, and we have a meal. Or guess what? Sometimes I just warm up the lasagna and we eat that. That is good too. Or you can get super creative and you can add all sorts of vegetables to your sauce and you can do mushrooms and onions and spinach and all sorts of things and make it extra super delicious. My kids wouldn't eat that though, so I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm gonna make what they're gonna eat. And because the point of these meals is to be easy for me. It's not to be experimental, it's not to be gourmet. I can make gourmet meals. I typically don't make gourmet freezer meals though. They're expensive. They're often complicated to make, but lasagna is easy. Keep lasagna easy and pat yourself on the back. I don't know if I got the energy for enchiladas tonight, y'all. We definitely don't have the energy for chicken pot pie, that's for sure. We may have to do enchiladas and chicken pot pie another day. I can just freeze all that chicken that I made. All right, we got four pounds of sausage in here. We are gonna add our tomato sauce. You're gonna do three quarts of tomato sauce. Didn't even need the butter knife on that one. The reason I'm not adding any herbs or salt or onions is because the tomato sauce already has all of that and then the sausage has a lot of herbs and spices in it too and a lot of salt. So it doesn't really need it. You may find that you make this and you want salt. Then what I'm going to do is remember all this pasta we made earlier? We're going to add six pounds of pasta to my giant pot here. Is it cooking if you don't make a little bit of a mess? And here's what makes it creamy sausage pasta is you are going to add heavy whipping cream or half and half to your sauce. We have our pasta all mixed together creamy sausage pasta now i will say if you have a lot of sausage add more it is so good when there's a whole bunch of sausage in there but i didn't have very much so i just did four pounds go ahead and do six pounds let's try it this way i just don't want to spill it everywhere all right four more done this last little thing I like to put on top does make this dish more expensive, so you don't have to do this. You can just use shredded Parmesan. You can shred it yourself. You can buy it shredded. But I like to buy the fresh Parmesan because this is already like a really creamy dish. So having those like clumps of fresh Parmesan on top just kind of takes it to the next level and makes it a little bit more interesting than just baked pasta. And I wish the kids were still up because they would have so much fun putting these on these casseroles. That takes boring baked pasta and makes it bougie. If you want to even up your game, 
go out to your garden and pick yourself some basil or go get you some from the store or from your friend that has too much and put that basil like the last little bit of cooking time put that basil on top and let it just kind of melt down into that cheese you will be taking simple baked pasta and seriously making it something gourmet that you could even call fancy <laughs> oh guys i don't got anything to do anymore but i did make 16 meals today so that's pretty good not counting all this broth cooking here I'm interested to see how much it makes because I don't actually know how much fits in that Nesco roaster. I'm gonna get all this stuff wrapped up, get all this stuff in the freezer bagged, remember all of our stuffed shells. Then we will get the joy of seeing how much food we made today. That's always incredibly satisfying. I will be getting this kitchen cleaned up because I don't care what, what time it is. If I'm not totally dead on my feet, I'm cleaning my kitchen. I cannot function in the morning with a dirty kitchen because I have too much to do. I just use the parchment to keep the aluminum foil from touching the food. And when I go to bake these, I will actually take it all off, take this off, and then tent the aluminum foil on it so that nothing sticks to the cheese while it's cooking and melting. So we don't want all that delicious cheese on our aluminum foil, and we don't want our aluminum foil touching our food. These are all 9 by 13 so what you're going to do is you're going to get you the extra wide aluminum foil so that it wraps really easy around your entire 9 by 13. Now you don't have to do this but I like to add the lid that comes with the 9 by 13s if yours came with those. It just adds a little extra measure of protection from freezer burn. We're trying to get this airtight. It's, everyone says airtight. It's not going to be airtight but we're going to get pretty close. Wrapping them this way they will keep for up to three months in the freezer. When I make freezer meals, it's not because that's all the food we're gonna eat that month. It's because it is gonna be the time when I need the easy things, which is at least once a week. And then also to take to potlucks, which is another once a week. So that's why I do this. Most of the time I really enjoy cooking fresh meals for my family, and honestly, most of the time they prefer that. But who doesn't love pasta and cheese? And then the last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna label what you made. So this is what flash freezing is. You can see all of these are nice and hard now. They're easy to put into a bag and then we can just pull out as few or as many as we would like so we don't have to use them all at once. And then of course the lovely thing about parchment is all those bits of cheese and spinach come right off. Just makes the cleanup so much easier. Another tip is I put these on a sheet pan and then I can pick up two at a time. Okay, and there you have it. A little peek inside my, one of my freezers. This is one of four. I've actually had a whole bunch of lard I need to render. And then we have all these dinners here. This is some breakfast and the last of the dinners. Then I have another freezer that has Bunch more breakfasts in it. So I did, I asked the experts on the internet, they said yes, you can leave your roaster on. I don't know what the actual company says, this is just what folks have been saying. So I'm gonna turn it down probably to warm. satisfying for you as it was for me it's late but I'm going to bed tired happy and ahead which is awesome thank you for joining me can't wait to see you guys in the next video